Hi, I'm Bet from Bet's Makes, and today we're going to make some simple placeholders. It's actually quite an easy process. So the first thing we want to do is go over to our demo table. So you can see my demo table. Now, what we have here, of course, is a, a lot of the stuff that I have. And I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit here so that we can work on parts and pieces. Of course, these all come from a scrap from when I had my Cricut machine. And of course, if you have one of these scrapbook boxes, um, I fill it up quite quickly. You end up with a ton of extra papers. And, you know, what can you do with them? Well, I'm going to show you a really simple way. I've got some nice covers. Some of them are double-sided. Some of them are single-sided. I've got some extra papers like this. So I'll just grab a potpourri of different things that I have in here that we can use for our project. So I've just grabbed three or four. And, of course, these boxes, I filled them up regularly with my scrap paper. Really easy to put together. Let me just put that out of the way so I have a nice variety here. Now I put one together here. I just made a little design at the end. So I've just folded it over and made it a placeholder. So what you're going to need, of course, are a bunch of scraps. And I have some that I've cut some pieces out. And you are also going to need what I is a quilling tool, which I do have in here. Now, if you don't have a quilling tool, you can use a different type of tool. No, that's, I'm not going to find it right away. There it is right there. Now, this is from Cricut as well, and it just has a little slot at the top. So you could make a dowel. You could make your own. That's what you want to do. I need any of my other tools in here right now, so I will just close my toolbox. I bought this toolbox at the dollar store. It's just plastic. I'm going to need a brayer tool. I don't need my ruler per se, but I'm going to need some scissors, perhaps a pen, and of course a bunch of scraps that I'm going to be working with. Now what I want to do is make some placeholders and I'm going to be able to make some designs on it. And I'm going to use the quilling tool to make a lot of these designs. So this is just an example of what I had done. Now what I want to do is maybe take one of these beautiful decorated sheets and I'm just going to make it a placeholder. All I'm going to do, of course, is fold it in half. Now I may have to have a spot to put somebody's name in there so I can just grab another color and decide, you know, okay, so I just want a little one. And the big goal behind here, of course, is to make your placeholder pretty straight. So I just use my cutter and just cut off that extra little piece that's here. Don't need that right now. And then I've got to decide, okay, a couple of inches should be pretty good. And I'll just put it at the two inch mark here with my cutter. And remember, we're using strictly scrap paper here. Okay, that looks really good. So now all I have to do is glue that together. Of course, there's some beautiful others and I'm just using a tacky glue here. And these are so simple. Remember, this is scrap pages only. People are always asking me, what do I do with my scraps? What do I do with my scraps? I'm gonna give you some great ideas here. So let's just put this one on place. Now you could write the person's name on there right away if you want. I'll just do that. I just happen to have the purple pen that matches. And this is a Cricut uh, Glitter Violet at 0.8. So I'm just going to put my name on it. I'm going to use any color, the gold or the silver. Now, the other thing is, you know, it's still pretty plain, even though it's a placeholder. So let's decorate it up a little more. I'm just going to move a lot of this stuff out of the way. I make great messes when I'm working on things. Now I have this, I just move this out of the way. Now what I did with this one is I quilled some of these ideas here. So I can actually make a little quilled flower at the top. So what I've done with some of my scraps is I've made these one eighth inch wide for as long as my scrap was. It happens to be a 12 inch scrap. Doesn't mean that you have to have yours that long. I'm just going to take the lid off my quilling tool here. 
So what you do with quilling is you just fit the item into the slot. Now you could do this by hand and all I am doing is turning it around and around and around. And I'm just going to make a little design out of the whole thing. This is so much fun actually, it's so easy to do. You can buy quilling sets as well and some of them can get pretty complicated with what you want to do. For now, all I'm going to do is just take this one piece and you can see how it comes out. But what I want to do is take the end piece and just glue it to the edge here. So let me grab my glue again. Just take a little piece on the edge. Put that back in place and I'm just going to glue that together. That's just because I don't want it to uncoil any further. So I end up with a nice little circle here. And I will put the lid back on my glue. I don't want it to dry. I'm going to take another one of my 1 8 inch strips. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfectly even, but you can do this with all your scraps. One of the things I tend to do when I have little edges like this left over in my paper is I take my quilling tool and I just pre turn them all so that I have pieces and parts. And I have this little tin that I keep the, them in and you'll see some are thick and some are thin. Let me just leave that one alone for a second. And I've just pre-quilled a lot of stuff that I have into place here. So I'm just gonna do a couple of these to see if I can get them about the same size. Remember, you can do this by hand. You don't have to do it um, with a tool. I just like to have that Cricut tool. It's an amazing tool to have. It is so simple. And you could make one out of a dowel if you wanted to. Okay, I'm just gonna have that one hold together here for a second. Approximately the same size. I'm gonna need my glue here again in a second. Just move some of these out of the way. Now what I want to do is put a nice little design here. Well, as I mentioned before, let me just move my cutting machine out of the way here. And I have a lot that I've, I've pre-made. Some are thick, some are thin, and I might take some thinner ones from my box. I have another box absolutely chock full. Now these are all made from scraps that came off the machine. So in order not to lose things, let's just put the quilling tool off to the side. Okay, so now I'm gonna decide what I want to do in the corner here to make this really decorative. Now I could just simply use it this way, or I can just take my fingers and I can press the bottom and make it kind of a petal. And I could also depress the top if I wanted to make this into a heart. So hold the bottom and then squish the top like this. And you'll see you get a heart shape. So all I'm doing is shaping it. Now I'm going to put it onto my invite. Add some glue on the bottom. That, and I'm going to add it to my placeholder here. So I've got a nice little heart. Now I can shape it further while the glue is not dry and just make it a really nice little shape. So that is all there is to adding that. But what if I wanted to add another one? This time I'm just going to add the glue as it is a circle. See, it's going to puff out on me, which is fine. Now I can put it into place right beside it, and then I can squish it from here into the shape that I want. So maybe I want another little heart. I find it easier to do it ahead of time than after the fact. I'm not getting the shape I exactly want, but it's close. And there we go. So this is a nice little way to add a couple of little finishing touches. Now, if you want to take something like this, that's a great placeholder. You can take smaller pieces. Let's see, I have in my scrap pile here, a nice little one here. And that looks pretty good for a card itself. So maybe I want to make this go this way. Then I can add some other designs. So there's a lot of other ways you can do it. So you could have a big placeholder like this. They've even got giant ones. 
happy is the heart at home. Now I probably wouldn't make this one into a placeholder, except I could lean it down just slightly. As you can see, I can just bend it. Let me just bend it here and have this a different way of holding a placeholder. And then you could put the person's name on it or you can give it some more decoration. I like to use a little bit of the quilling because that seems to work out really well. So there's three examples of things that you can do with scrap paper in order to make some placeholders. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this one and go get your scrapbook pile out and start working on your placeholders. Until next time, happy crafting.